there, Junior Rangers. It's me, Ranger Pele. Who's ready to hike and discover with me today? Great! Today we are going to go on a hike and discover what kinds of animals we can find living here in the forest. And we're going to figure out how they are adapted to live in this environment. So since it's summertime here, there are so many different kinds of animals that we might see on our hike today. In summer, there are more animals to see than in winter, and that is because whether or not an animal is here in winter time depends on what adaptations it has. An adaptation is a quality that an animal has that helps it survive in its environment. You may have heard the phrase, eyes in the front, born to hunt, eyes on the side, run and hide. That saying explains how having eyes on different parts of an animal's head might help it adapt to its environment. So, if an animal is not at the top of the food chain, meaning other animals hunt it, it might have eyes on the sides of its face so it has a larger field of vision, meaning it is better able to see all around itself to keep watch for predators. An example of an animal like this would be the snowshoe hare. Predators, meaning animals that hunt for their food, like coyotes, will often have eyes at the front of their face because this gives them greater depth perception which helps them track their prey easier. Adaptations don't just help animals hunt or hide from predators, they can help animals survive in many different ways. For example, here at Crater Lake National Park, animals have different adaptations to help them survive our cold, snowy winters. Here, we get an average of 42 feet of snow every year. That's about nine Ranger Pele's worth of snow. What are some adaptations that you can think of that would help an animal survive in all that snow? When I think of an adaptation that would help an animal survive the snowy Crater Lake winters, I think of having fur and large paws. Our park animals can't go out and buy a jacket for cold days in the snow, so having a natural fur coat would seem like an important adaptation. Now I think having big paws would be really important as well. Have you ever walked on top of fresh snow? If you haven't, what happens is your feet sink right into the snow, kind of like how they sink into soft sand at the beach. If the snow is powdery enough, your whole leg might be covered, and you might even have snow all the way up to your belly button. That is why when humans go hiking in the snow, we put on snowshoes. Snowshoes make our feet larger so that our body weight is more evenly distributed so that we don't sink into the snow so much. So, since animals can't put on snowshoes, Having big paws would be a really useful adaptation to have here in wintertime. Now, depending on what kinds of adaptations an animal has, it will do one of three things in wintertime. It will either hibernate, migrate, or tolerate. Hibernation is when an animal goes into a deep sleep for a long period of time in winter. Can you think of an animal that hibernates? I know that bears hibernate. Other animals will migrate or move outside the park to lower elevations where there's less snow because they're not well adapted to deal with snow and cold. Can you think of something that migrates? I know there are lots of types of birds that migrate. For example, Canadian geese. Some animals, however, will tolerate the cold snowy winters and stay in the park because they are well adapted to the cold snowy environment. Can you think of an animal that would tolerate our winters? What about a bobcat? I know that they have thick fur and large paws. So, while we're out hiking, hopefully we'll see some animals from a safe distance. And if we do, let's try to figure out whether they are a hibernator, a migrator, or a tolerator. Who's ready to hike and discover? Okay, let's go. All right, so we've been hiking a bit, hoping to see something interesting. Oh. Wow, look at that, it's pretty adorable. Do you know what this is? A lot of people think that they're chipmunks, but this is actually a golden mantled ground squirrel. You can tell the difference because chipmunks have stripes below their eyes, right on their cheeks, whereas golden mantled ground squirrels do not. It's easy to remember because mantled just means headed, so the golden mantled ground squirrels have the golden heads. As you can see, these guys have a little tunnel in the ground. That is because, unlike tree squirrels, ground squirrels live in the ground. What do you think they are? Hibernators, 
migrators or tolerators? Well, I don't think they're migrators. Look at those little legs. It'd be hard to travel far on those. What about tolerators? Mm, their paws seem pretty small, so they must be hibernators. How lucky. So early in our hike, and we've already spotted a hibernator. Who's ready to see if we can find anything else? Yeah? Okay, let's go. One tip I have, if you want to see animals on your hike, is to be very quiet while you're hiking. If you're loud, animals will hear you and they'll try to avoid you. Oh, deer. No, really, look at that. There's deer right there. Don't they look spectacular? What do you guys think deer are? Hibernators, migrators, or tolerators? I think we can rule out tolerators. Look at those long skinny legs. Imagine them trying to walk through the snow. They'd sink right up to their tummies, maybe even all the way up to their antlers. What about hibernating? Have you ever heard of a deer digging a den and curling up for winter? Me either. Um, those hooves don't look like they'd be good for digging. So what does that mean it is? That's right, it's a migrator. Deer will migrate to lower, less snowy elevations in winter, but then come back in summer. They are well adapted to migrate because they have those long legs that can help them walk those far distances to those lower elevations. That was pretty amazing getting to see that entire deer family. Are you guys ready to hike some more to see if we can find any more animals? Yes? All right, let's go. All right. I have hiked to a pretty amazing part of the park. The rocky hill behind me is called a talus slope, and I'm hoping we might be able to see one of my favorite animals, the pika. Pika are the smallest members of the rabbit family. They live in tunnels and talus slopes like this one, and we're going to be very quiet again to see if we can spot one. Being quiet doesn't just help because it makes animals not hide from you. Being quiet is also important because sometimes we hear an animal before we actually see it. For example, pika make a noise that sounds like meep. And if we're really quiet, we might hear that noise, which will help us be able to find those pika. Wow, they're so talkative. Do you see that over there? What an adorable creature. In summertime, pika will eat plants and grasses like the ones that you see around here. So what do you think it is, a hibernator, a migrator, or a tolerator? Well, I think we can roll out migrator. These guys don't have very long legs. It would be pretty difficult for them to walk miles and miles to an area with less snow. So it's down to hibernator or tolerator. Since they like to eat grasses and those are hard to find in the snow, you would think that they would be hibernators, but actually they're tolerators. Pika are awake all winter long, living in their tunnels, and they're able to be awake because they plant ahead. All summer, as they gather plants and grasses, they'll leave some of them out to the, in the sunshine to dry out, kind of like hay. And then they'll store that food for wintertime so that they have food to eat all winter long. What smart cookies. We were pretty lucky today. We were able to see some pretty interesting and cute animals on our hike today. Sometimes you won't be that lucky. But even if you can't see the animals, there are other ways to try to observe them. Like if you can't see them, maybe you can hear them. Or you can look for other signs of those animals, like looking for tracks on the ground or scratch marks on trees. So even if you don't get to see the wildlife, you can still learn about what animals live along your hiking route. Thank you for joining me here at Crater Lake National Park today and helping me discover how these animals are so well adapted to live here. Now it's your turn to hike. Grab your adults and head over to your local nature park, hike in your suburban neighborhood, or even along your city sidewalks and see what kinds of animals you can see, hear, or discover signs of. Then, after you discover what lives in your area, you want to ask yourself, what kind of adaptations would you want to have if you were an animal living in your hometown? Would you want fur, large ears, webbed toes, camouflage, or something else? Then once you've decided what adaptations would be best, you can design your own animal. If you're artistic, you can draw it out. If you're more of a writer, you can write all about it. Then once you've created this 
perfect animal for your environment, you can share it with your friends and family and tell them all about how it's well adapted to live in its environment. Of course, don't forget to go to our website so that you can download and print your virtual Junior Ranger badge once you're done. But before you can get to designing that animal, you need to get out, hike, and discover. And of course, don't forget your adult.